Well, I understand Andrew has responsibilities, but I'm afraid the only telegram we'll be sending tonight will read, Lackey has a broken heart. Stop. Hello there, and welcome to the second part of these bottled fairy paintings that I have been vlogging and editing for about a month now. If you missed the first part of the video, I'll try to drop a little link in here, look around the screen for it, and then you can watch that one if you just started on the second one, which is this one. So I had started working on these as a fun kind of relaxation sort of thing, kind of do some art that is less stressful and more just something that I want to do. When you make art professionally, there's a lot of pressure to paint things that will sell you know, for money, because you need money to live, right? And that's part of making a living, is making money to live on. So when I'm painting a lot of the time, I'm thinking about that and not really allowing myself to paint 100% of what I want to paint. And sometimes that really can become very stifling in a way and can be very frustrating and can really make you feel very burned out. I paint uh, between four and five days a week so I paint quite a bit and I usually paint for at least two hours a day. I try to get around four hours every day of painting time if I can swing it. So I paint a lot and painting all the time when you're not always getting to paint what you want to paint can really make you feel very burned out and it can be really hard to want to keep coming to work every single day. So I recently made a wish list of every silly weird idea that I ever wanted to paint and decided that between bigger oil paintings and like more serious projects, I would allow myself to work on some of these wish list items. I actually started watercolor painting a long time ago and it's something that I really enjoy and I don't do it very, very much, like not nearly often enough, really. I have a giant collection of watercolors. I recently started making my own paint again for the first time in a long time. So that collection is growing every day. And yet I don't really allow myself to watercolor that much. Part of that is probably because of the perception of watercolor and a lot of fine art, you know, very, I don't want to say snobby, but kind of snobby circles. Uh, watercolor is kind of frowned upon. There are people that really feel that watercolor is very much for amateurs, that watercolor paintings will never be worth what oil paintings are worth. I don't really understand that point of view completely. Um, you know, there was a point where some, well, a lot of watercolor paint wasn't really that light fast, and so perhaps a watercolor painting might not last as long as an oil painting. There also were some issues with like paper manufacturing, but these days paper is pretty stable and watercolors are generally permanent. There are some colors that you do have to be careful about, like reds and almost any kind of paint are usually the first ones to fade out. There are also, on the other end of the spectrum, 
watercolor purists who really think that if you're going to make a watercolor painting, you shouldn't ever use anything else other than watercolors. So if you need to add some white highlights, you need to think ahead and not actually paint anything there so that the white of the paper will be the highlight. So for these paintings, I'm using white fluid acrylic in order to help define the jar shape and also to give it some highlights and glare the way glass jars would have. This would be a no-no. If I were a watercolor purist, I would never do this. But I don't really like to hold myself back with kind of silly things like that. And I know some people will be offended that I said it's silly, but I think it is silly. I, uh, I like being able to use anything to create the image that I want to create. So I have a little bit of like almost everything in my studio because you just never know when you might need a little bit of some like weird art supply or when you might just need like one color pencil to help add a little detail to a watercolor painting or when you might need just a little bit of acrylic paint or whatever. Sometimes I'll even use oil pastels or chalk pastels to add a little softness to my watercolor paintings. So all of that would be very, very frowned upon if I were going for some kind of a, a purist approach here. A lot of people find watercolor very intimidating and they feel that there isn't any way to correct your mistakes or that once you put it down it's just there and while the colors are usually light fast these days some watercolors are very very staining so as soon as they touch the paper they're just there and you can't really remove them you can cover them up with like acrylic paint but there are also non-staining watercolors and usually they don't really say on the packaging whether they're staining or non-staining. You'll have to just try them out yourself, make your own little color swatches and see if you can actually lift the color with a wet brush. Sometimes when you make a mistake with watercolor, you can lift it. So if you're using non-staining colors or if you're really fast and you realize you made a mistake before it dries, sometimes you can just wash your, your brush out and then just with water, you can like kind of lightly scrub the paper and dab it with a paper towel in order to remove the color that you don't want. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but usually it works enough that you can paint over it with something else. If it doesn't work, then sometimes you just have to be creative and, and roll with that mistake. If you scrub too much, you can actually ruin the surface of your paper. So you'll start to see your paper sort of create almost like lint under the brush. And then you're washing away the surface of the paper. And uh, sometimes, you know, I'll scrub and I'll start to see a little bit of that and stop and it will be okay. But if you go too far, you can't really fix it and you'll have to start all over on a new piece of paper. So, or you can paint over it with acrylic paint if you're not a purist. I've also heard people say that magic erasers, like the Mr. Clean Magic erasers, um, that those will remove watercolor paint. Although personally, I haven't ever tried this because it's been a very long time since I got myself into a pickle with watercolor paint that I couldn't just lift it or paint over it or just make it work for me. So I don't actually know if this works or not. I've never tried it, but I suspect it would also eventually ruin the surface of the paper if you were scrubbing too hard. So keep that in mind. Anytime that you're working with watercolor, if you overwork the surface of the paper, there's really no going back and it's better, in my opinion, to just roll with it and try to make the mistake work for you than to risk damaging the integrity of the surface by scrubbing and scrubbing at it. 
Overall, I think a lot of people are intimidated by watercolor because they perceive a lack of control over watercolor. They think that it will be hard or impossible to fix mistakes and maybe they're a little bit too rigid in the way that they think about painting to be able to improvise when a mistake occurs. But I think that that's kind of the nice thing about watercolors is if you do make a mistake, you can actually kind of flex those mental muscles and try to figure out a creative way to make it just be part of the painting. Or sometimes if I find that a color won't lift, I just find out what happens if I put another color over it. Maybe sometimes I come up with a new mixture of colors that I hadn't really ever thought of before and now I have something new and unusual that I can go back to in the future on purpose. Overall, I think watercolors kind of get an unfairly bad rap and I really love them and I hope that if you feel intimidated by them, maybe you feel a little bit braver now. All right, well, I am about to go again, but I will post another video on Friday and it will be the last, the third part in this series. And on Tuesday, I will have another oil book. All right, take care of yourselves and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.